Hello and today I want to talk about some brand new QNAPs, but not any old new QNAPs, I want to talk about 5 gigabit Ethernet QNAP. Now for those that have been following this channel, NAS Compares, the other YouTube channel, Span.com, and any one of the myriad of ways that I like to talk to you guys about network attached storage, you will know that I have highlighted that QNAP have unveiled two new 5 bay NASes. These two devices both feature 5 gigabit Ethernet, and although they are new to the scene, I think it would be unfair to call them new NASes. These are the TVS951N and the TS963N. These are two devices that in a kind of a way have already existed. A little while ago, I said a little while ago, less than a year ago now, at the tail end of 2018, um, QNAP uncovered a bunch of new 9-bay NASes for everyone, and me, just like everyone else, when we heard 9-bay NAS, we all went, hang on, what? Um, because 9 is such a weird number, but as it got closer and closer to its full reveal, it became ultimately apparent that these are NASes that have got 5 hard drive bays there based on the front, and 4 SSD bays, with these SSD bays enabling things like general SSD caching to Q-tier, QNAP's own smart intelligent uh, tiering system of storage, as well as allowing you to utilise these 4 SATA 2.5 inch bays to create fast raided storage that could be used for much faster access. Now, on top of that, both of the, uh, the or the whole family of 9 bays that were released last year, and that is the 951X, the 963X, and the 932X, all three of these featured 10 gigabit ethernet, and they all featured a different kind of 10 GBE, and basically a different structure and architecture. Now, the ones we're gonna focus on today are the 951 and the 963. The reason being that these are the two that QNAP have decided to release as a new version with five gigabit ethernet instead of 10. Now, both of these devices featured copper-based ethernet. That is RJ45 or base T. And both of them originally arrived with 10 gigabit Ethernet port. Now, QNAP can see the way the wind is blowing. And definitely, last year, I was one of many, many people that was talking about just how big, big, big 10 GBE was going to be because of its cost getting low, low, low. And it has. But there's still no denying that a number of people who were living on the 1 gigabit Ethernet line might have seen the price of 10 GBE coming down but thought, not quite yet and they weren't ready to make the jump they needed new hardware but 10 gigabit ethernet storage just didn't interest them enough it didn't sit the sit with them as uh, a, a very um, natural evolution at this time they thought 10 gb was still too far off to invest in it now for them but with qnap investing more and more in 5 gbe and multi gigabit solutions as well as of course the qna uc 5g 1t that we featured on the channel a few times it almost becomes natural that qnap have now looked into these five gigabit ethernet solutions and these two nine bays are the two biggest examples of that mad seagull there in the background gotta love the seaside so the 951x is kind of their graphically enabled five gigabit solution sorry the 951n now these devices both of them that we're going to talk about today are um, nine bay devices there once again five hard drive bays three and a half inch media inside them and of course they do support ssds as well and these support up to the very latest 16 terabyte iron wolf nas hard drives on top of that the four ssd bays support the very latest ssds and again they support iron wolf ssds they support samsung ssds you've got a great way to have different kinds of storage both of them the 963n and the 951n give you that but after this things change because both of them arrive with one 5GBE port and one 1GBE port but the architecture and the intended user situation for these devices is very different. The big clue is that one of them's TVS and the other one's TS. Now the TS963N, I'm going to look at my notes real quickly, is the unit that arrives with an AMD processor. But this is a less graphically enabled AMD chip than most people think. It doesn't have like a Radeon. It's nowhere near like a Ryzen that's super powered. It's the, uh, the GX420MC. This is uh, a much uh, fast acting processor that's less geared towards graphical manipulation, but it is a great file handling CPU and all that uh, for, from the guys at AMD. And although it isn't like an x86 64 bit in the Intel sense of the word, it is the AMD equivalent with the added bonus that you are getting great, great performance and a lower price point than a number of other devices. And that 5GBE is being treated 
in a much more affordable way than you would expect from you know something that's been downscaled to a, uh, from a 10 GB to a 5 GB. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but what it comes down to is QNAP have looked at this 10 GB solution and maybe it didn't sell as well as they hoped. Maybe they've realized that this hardware is way too much up here and there's people down here that just aren't buying it. Um, in every sense of the word, that a 5GB solution, as well as the adapters that allow you to create a much more modular network across your home or business environment, suddenly becomes very, very appealing to users. Now, the 963X and its AMD CPU there, which is a 2.0 gigahertz CPU quad core and two gig of memory that can be upgraded up to 16 gig of memory. This device does not have the likes of HDMI because it's not graphically enabled. It's got uh, the audio out socket there on the rear, but this is a file handling machine. And although it does promise uh, lower tiers of virtualization, it's nothing compared to what you'll get with a solid Intel moving forward. Whereas the TBS 951N, that has got that 5 GBE, and on the face of it, when you glance at them, are incredibly similar. But when you look at the rear of it and see that it's got an HDMI port, an HDMI 1.4B, and on top of that, a 7th gen Intel CPU on the rear that might be dual core, but it's still a great little CPU inside. And again, uh, the handling of the networking on the rear is in a Quantia CPU. I think it's the, um, the 111C, hopefully on screen, it should tell you more. But the CPU inside it, is still an Intel. Now, the CPU found inside, so I'm going to quickly scroll to my notes there, how terribly unprofessional. Um, that is uh, an Intel Celeron 3865U. And I know a number of you aren't exactly going to be jumping around the houses at that processor. It's not like a high powered Celeron. It's not, I mean, it is a Celeron, but it's not really like some of the J series we've seen. But in many regards, it's actually better. And this dual core CPU got 1912 on CPU benchmark, which for a dual core is pretty impressive, given that that J3355 that we've seen knocking around only scored around 1500. Now, that NAS, the 951N, is far more geared towards graphical manipulation. Yes, it's a dual core, and in terms of virtualization, it's going to be a little bit limiting, but in terms of surveillance and the fact that it's got QVR Pro support and those eight licenses, as well as support of things like Q, um, QDupe or QDupe or whatever, however one pronounces it, and of course, some of those home applications like QMaggie file orientation, a multimedia console for managing your entire multimedia library on that more graphically enabled NAS, and of course, all the other applications currently available in 4.4.1. So you've got two different five base solutions being presented to you. You've got one more graphical, the other one more file speed handling, but both of them at five gigabit ethernet. And remember, because of devices like this, you are able to connect your PC, your Mac, your Linux computer, even Android devices from what I can see, as long as you can get the driver between this and that NAS. And I will be doing tests on those when they arrive. I'm looking forward to doing more tests with this. And now the announcement of Acer Store's um, little budget 2.5 GBE adapter, we are seeing lots more solutions at a far more affordable level that allow users to take advantage of greater than one gigabit ethernet speeds without breaking the bank, therefore creating this family, this tree between one and 10 that until recently never existed, let's be honest. Even outside of this channel, how many people have you heard talking about 2.5 gigabit solutions or 5 gigabit solutions as much as 9 or 10 months ago? Most people have looked at link aggregation and that's about it. Thanks to devices like this, you can definitely shortcut your way onto faster platforms or if you've got existing 10 gigabit Ethernet platforms, you're able to bridge the slower devices that have only got 1 GBE without breaking the bank and only spending a little bit now and buying a few years of time out of them. And that's why these nine bays are quite important. I keep saying, do you know, let's call them five bays with uh, bells and whistles. Now, the prices of the previous generation will obviously be higher than these. Although they look remarkably similar, that connection on the rear will make all the difference. And I'll be very interested to see how QNAP land on the price point on these devices, particularly given that we're seeing this trend towards 2.5 and 5 gigabit Ethernet solutions become I mean, if not the standard, then pretty close indeed. So if you have enjoyed this, if you want to learn more about these products, 
go into the description for the full breakdown of specifications on both of these devices at NAS Compares. If you want to register your interest or get one, because these devices have always got a very, very low stock when they're first released. It's always the same. Do go to the guys at Span and as experts to get your order in now or just ask some questions about it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do click like and subscribe and click the bell if you want to be more notified about some of the big, big, big things, trust me, happening in the next few weeks in the world of NAS with at least two of these brands. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to click like and subscribe as I say, and I'll see you next time.